This is an Acer Veritas... Veriton? Veriton! <laughs> yeah, Acer isn't probably the truth of the universe, but anyway, uh, this is an Acer Veriton M4, I think 4618 or something like that. It's a <clears throat> it's a business grade Sandy Bridge. Uh, that's second generation Intel Core i series piece of hardware. Um, it should take any uh, any second gen uh, chip. Um, but the units I have are i7 2600s. I typically only acquire i7 based units just because most of what I do people want i7s. I'm turning most of these things into gaming desktops and people really want i7s. Um, so I want to do a quick teardown on this today and kind of an overview of features. It's got this little... can you see that in the... yes you can. Okay. It's got this little spring-loaded doohickey here. You push down that, that gives you, um, gives you, uh, once you access the case. So, we're gonna go through tearing this down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull out the CPU heat sink. Let's see if I can get a little more of that there. There we go. Okay. So... So I actually really like these after looking at them. The big difference when this, uh, with this, especially comparing it to HP and some of the Dells, is that I know I know Acer has kind of a bad rap, but it appears to be fairly standard components. I think the motherboard may even be a uh, just a standard, maybe slightly modified Intel chipset based. Or not just Intel chips. I think the board might actually be an Intel board, just with Acer's custom uh, uh, BIOS overlay. And the cool thing about that is the fact that it uses... So the next thing we're going to pull out, the power supply. It uses a standard PC power supply which is very nice because on a machine like this, typically your biggest limiting factor is the power supply. And let's see here, it looks like in order to pull this power supply out, we're gonna have to go behind. Um, it does use uh, it does use these, these hard drive uh, caddies. Looks like there are four of them. They are apparently only set up for 3.5 drives, but it anyone with an ounce of creativity can mount a 2.5 to this if you want to upgrade to an SSD, which definitely would be a good upgrade for a machine like this. So... So looking at the back here, we have... I don't know how well you can, yeah, I guess you can see that. We've got DVI, VGA, display port, your old style mouse and keyboard, six USBs, Ethernet, and your standard audio options. So in order to get at the rest of this, we're gonna have to pull This is actually kind of unusual. Most of these or non-custom cases, you usually can't access the back panel. So that's kind of an interesting, interesting capability. So that comes off. And this, oh, look at that. I was not expecting that. Look at that. It's got a nice little, uh, nice little cable run right there. This is actually really cool. You don't usually see stuff like this on something like a cheap Acer. I guess this is a little different than their normal stuff. It is a business grade machine, but it's definitely easier to work with than a lot of the HPs and Dells that I've seen. Something 
thing I can't speak to though is as nice as this lack of proprietariness is, um, I can't speak to whether or not the largely proprietary components on the HP and Dell units contribute to reliability because it is true that Dell and HP business grade hardware do tend to be exceptionally reliable, but they are also generally largely um, proprietary components. So this being largely off the shelf, um, I don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna um, contribute to reliability. I will say that if a part on this unit goes bad, it will be generally easier to find replacement parts than a, than a Dell or an HP. Um, but beyond that, I can't really comment. So that just comes out. It looks like it's a decent power supply. I'm holding it in my hand. It doesn't, oh yeah, it's, it's FSP. So they're, they're okay. I mean, they're not top end, but they're okay power supplies. Um, so it, it doesn't, so a lot of people know you can largely tell with power supplies by the weight. Not always, but it gives you a good idea. Um, let me see if you can see that in the, there we go, see that in the video. So it's a, it's a mid-level, it's a 300 watt, it'll run, it'll run anything you're going to throw at it up to and including an okay video card. You could probably run a, like a GTX 1050, 1060, something like that off of this without a problem. Um, it weighs, it's hefty enough, it doesn't look like it's weighted or anything, it's hefty enough, I'm going to say it's, it's decent. It's, it's as decent of a 300 watt power supply as you're going to get. Certainly a 500 or a 600 or a 700 or, you know, 400 would be better, but for what it is, it's probably as good as you're going to get. So something I get a lot of people asking me on with this unit or with, with these units is can you pull the parts out? And I'm actually going to do it with this one just because I have it sitting here. I need to clean it out anyway. So we're going to start our SATA cable off, pull our other SATA cable off. Uh, looks like usually, yeah, up in that corner, try to sit down in that corner. Um, you've got audio. I'm going to guess these fronts are probably USB. Yeah, I'm going to say those are USB. Yeah, it says USB on the board. And then you've got your uh, um, power button and switches. I'm guessing this is a speaker. Yeah, it's a little speaker. Okay, so this will be fully removable. It's a standard mount micro ATX board, so it will completely come out. And unlike a lot of the Dell and HP units, it does not appear to have anything proprietary that would keep it from just popping right into another random uh, unit. And based on looking at the construction, this, I mean, this could straight up be an Intel board just re, uh, relabeled with Acer labels. It's definitely very similar in construction, but I don't know for sure. I did see some BIOS updates for this, some recent BIOS updates too, like 2015, um, which may mean that you might be able to upgrade this board with a newer third gen Sandy Bridge chip, but I can't comment on that for certain at the moment. Once I make a determination on that, I will leave info on that on the comments to this video. So, let's see what we got going on here. Something's holding it in. Oh, no, it looks like it comes right out. Okay, so, what do we got going on here? I feel like I'm missing something. What do we got? Something definitely doesn't want to let go. Oh, wait, that might have been it. Let's see here. So I'd recommend getting all these cables out of the way. They will get in the way of the board when you go to remove it. Okay. So it looks like we have a... I would actually remove this. This is a, I think a chassis intrusion detector.
Obviously, anybody converting this for gaming or general home usage does not need a chassis intrusion detector. So something is... Oh, that must... Okay, there it goes. Okay, so it's got a... It looks like the screw... The, uh... So, yeah, so this is a... Just a standard micro ATX. I'm trying to get that in the... In there, huh? you can see it. Anyway, yeah, it's just a standard micro ATX, and unlike a lot of these, even when they are removable, oftentimes the uh, what we call the I/O shield, which is this little part right here, is oftentimes built into the case. In this case, that is not so. This is fully removable, um, so that gives you an idea of what you can do with this. Everything else is standard. Drives just plop into the bays. Um, so video or uh, power supply wise, this will take up. I mean, other than the largest massive power supplies out there, which you really aren't going to buy for a case like this. Other than those, this is going to take any normal power supply. Most power supplies, most normal ones, are going to come to about here. Like if you get a decent quality Corsair 650, it's see if can you see my hand? Yeah, it's going to come to about here. So you'll be able to fix them. It'll be a little tight. You'll be able to fit them. Um, and then as far as video card. Let's take a look at, um, let's see here. So stereotypical, this is very typical of what you're gonna try to put in the system. It'll probably fit, let's see what we can do. No, I guess I'm wrong, it's just a little bit too large. That's a GTX 770. So you're probably gonna want This is a 660. This is an average sized mid-level card. And that'll fit. Yeah, so that will fit. You'll probably have to remove this little guy. Oh, it just comes right off. Okay. So yeah, this would fit. So this is gonna mean um, this is the same size card as um, as your average uh, GTX 1060. Uh, 3 gig or 6 gig. There's going to be a few that are a little larger. In Sorry, my camera cut out there. Games like Fortnite, Apex Legends, stuff like that. Again, probably medium settings, 1080p resolution. Um, pretty much any game. I mean, anything older than that, like say 15 to, to 2018 gen releases, all of them are going to run medium at 1080p or better for the most part. If you put something like a GTX 1060 in this, this will max out most games at 1080p resolution. You're not going to be running stuff 4K, which again, I'm going to say, I get these people all the time. And honestly, if you're looking to run the latest and greatest games at 144 hertz, at, you know, 3K resolution or 2K, whatever the heck they call it, this isn't for you. Um, this is for people who want to spend sub $500 and get a machine that's going to run any game out there well, but they're not looking for the bleeding edge. This is perfect for that. You could take it a bit further if you wanted to put something like a 1080 or a 1070 in this. You could take it a bit further by getting either a... 1070 or 1080 mini like the ITX version or the other option you could do is transfer these parts into another case. Um, I hope everybody finds this interesting and informative and uh, if there's any questions I think this covered pretty in depth but if there's any questions on this particular model unit feel free to ask me in the comments and I will get at it when I get a chance.